I divided up my images into categories. Wow, that's all glare. Can you even see that? Let me see. Hang on. Is any better? Maybe a little bit. Anyway, <clears throat> there are just some categories that I frequently use. <clears throat> and um, stuck my images into clear sheets of all kinds, which I'll show you. These are chipboard dividers that I had from... Uh, they were already hole punched. I think my husband brought them home one time years ago. He had some, a box of um, these binders for work that we had to put together. And the printed papers were separated by these chipboard sheets that were punched. Which, of course, I had to keep because I knew I would need them someday. I didn't realize it would be 15 years later, but it was. And I'm glad I had them. So, <clears throat> people and parts. This is where a lot of the paper doll images ended up going. These are cut because I ran out of, these are those like trading card sheets. I ran out of the full sheets and these I had cut like this because I used to keep my coupons in them in a little coupon wallet thing. So I had to make good use of those. I need to pick up some more baseball card sheets. This one is actually a, it has little bitty sections. It is for um, slides, I think, like little um, film slides. Do people actually get their film developed into the slides anymore? I don't know. I wouldn't think so. Anyway, that's what these are for. They're just these little bitty sections. And you can buy these clear sheets like this online. There's lots of places that will sell um, what they call, they're like specialty sheet protectors, I think is what they call them. So this is the people and parts section. So I printed out a bunch of heads. These are things that I already had um, collected. And then the bigger ones are in these full sheets. And I usually put a piece of paper in between so that I can have a front and a back. You know, and when you pull stuff out from this side, it doesn't disturb the images on that side. So, that's those. <clears throat> and then I had, I started making the dolls. These are my leftovers. And the dolls that I didn't really have a specific use for. Okay, I didn't have use for any of them. I just wanted to make them. But these are some that needed a little something, something. Or, you know, their bodies are not finished. So I stuck them in here. And I'll use these on journal pages or... Um, cards or you know whenever I need some kind of little embellishment and my finished dolls are in this book which I'll talk about later too I'll have to do another video on this one in this page um, if you can see I don't know if there's too much of a glare but there's all different kinds. Some were um, actual, this little one right here is one of those actual little vintage paper dolls that you can print out. Um, she has a separate head, a torso, arms, and legs. Others were out of magazines or um, old pictures that I got off the internet. I printed out some templates for making paper dresses, and that's how I just cut their little outfits out of cardstock. And then, of course, you know, you're never fully dressed until you're accessorized. So a couple have these masks, and I like hats. I gave everyone that I could some kind of hat or crown. And look, this girl's got an umbrella made out of scrap paper. These were just so much fun. I'm trying to match up legs to fit their bodies was a challenge. Um, most of them don't have arms because arms just irritated me. They're difficult to cut out, you know, the little fingers and I, it was just, it was way too tedious. I didn't want to mess with arms. So um, a lot of their bodies are just a dress form shape and some of them are actually a cut out heart and it kind of makes it look like their arms are behind their back. 
so I was good with that. Some actually have arms, most of them don't. Um, I think all of them have legs or feet of some kind. I was able to find enough images that weren't too tedious to cut out for legs and feet. So that was my adventure into paper dolls that was brought about by watching some videos that would hopefully give me some inspiration to learn how to do better letters. Which also spurred my need to clean out my um, image binder. And this is much more doable now. It's, um, you know, I don't have one separate image in each pocket. You know, some of them, there's several of the same type of image, even though it's not the exact same image. But they're spread out enough that it's easy to see, it's easy to dig through. I have a lot of cutouts. These were just some of the collage sheet papers that were in my binder that I needed to get rid of. Ran them through my Cricut and cut them into different shapes. Um, I had these are in, for photographs and I just I used what I had. And one thing I wanted to show that I'm going to get to eventually. <clears throat> I just don't remember exactly where I put it. It just makes me happy flipping through this, so you're just going to have to suffer through. Sorry. I'm in a happy place now. Oh, here it is. I have a lot of tags. Um, I just seem to print them out compulsively anytime I find free, really cute tags on the internet to print. I print them. And since they're so easy to cut out, I usually go ahead and cut them out. Did you see what just happened? How this flew out? Okay, here's my solution for that. I just haven't gotten around to fixing it. For problems like that, these little images that fly out, and for things that I just have an abundance of and maybe want to keep separately, I made this little pouch. And it's a clear plastic thing. And these are like odd shaped tags and large tags, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've printed out, but I haven't trimmed them up. Um, and there's quite a few of them, so I didn't want to just put them on in big sheet protectors because, you know, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to flip through and, and see them like I want to. So I made this little plastic pouch, or I guess it's vinyl. And what this is, I actually had to go out to the garage and dig this out of the Goodwill bin that I put it into a few weeks ago. It's some vinyl that I bought years ago. Um, <clears throat> back when there were some rubber stamp manufacturers that were doing unmounted stamps. This was back in the day, early, you know, early days of unmounted stamps. And there was not really, um, there were several different methods for putting stamps onto blocks, but not like they have now with the um, foam and the, you know, you buy the stamp now, and a lot of them, they're already cut out and ready to just stick onto the acrylic block. <clears throat> Back then, it was Velcro on halos. It was mount your own on wood blocks or whatever you had. And for a while, there was this cling vinyl thing. And this, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I bought this roll, used it, it's, it's got a sticky quality, sort of, used it as a cling vinyl because it sticks really good to acrylic blocks. You know, put it on the back of your unmounted stamp and then put this up next to an acrylic block and it, it holds it. Used it for that. I bought the huge roll because we were also at that time making these water cards, these um, rubber stamped greeting cards <clears throat> where you make a little pouch out of this same vinyl stuff. You fill it with water and confetti and whatever and you seal it and then you put it in a card and it would look like a little fishbowl. It was just adorable. Really cute. Heck of a lot of trouble. Well, my camera died as I was talking about 
water cards and this vinyl stuff and how much trouble those cards were to make. So um, while I was downloading the stuff off of the memory card, I went to check the mail and I got some a uh, few things from Amazon that I'd ordered and been waiting on. And two complete mail failures today. Look at this. This was in my mailbox, just like this. It, it has been chewed up, spit out. Look, fortunately, you know, it's, it's pretty much a junk mail. I mean, this is a company I've ordered from before, and I don't need anything from them right now, which is a really good idea because this is awful. Look at that. Well, then again, I've gone through a lot of trouble to make paper look exactly like this, so, you know, maybe this just saved me the trouble. But anyway, your mail should not look like this unless you make it look like this on purpose. Am I right? I opened my box from Amazon, which was just a small box of a few small things that I needed. And one of the things was some of this Beacon 3-in-1 craft glue that I love. Look, I ordered two bottles. The other one was just fine. This one was laying in the bottom of a box with a big blob of glue behind it and glue coming out of it. Fortunately, it was all dried and nothing else got ruined. But there's a little hole in the side of the tip, or it appears to be anyway, where the, the glue leaked out. So, um, yeah, I sent Amazon a nasty picture. They really should have put these in some kind of plastic baggie or something. You know, things that could leak. They should do that. So, it didn't, I didn't lose that much product. Maybe just about that, that much of it. But still, it's that much that I paid for and didn't get, right? So that, that just irritated me. But on a happy note, I did get a new thing of watercolors, which I've been needing. And this is just an inexpensive, it's called Koi Watercolors Pocket Field Sketch Box. I don't do much watercoloring out in the field, but um, I chose this because I read some good reviews about it. And it had, um, it's nice and compact, so, you know, theoretically, if I did ever want to go out in the field, I could take it with me. And it had a lot of colors to choose from. It has this little uh, palette thing on top, which comes out, and you can put it here, here, or here, you know, depending on what you're doing. And then you can put your watercolor paper right here. It comes with a water brush, which is great. And then these little, it has the little pans of color. So it was inexpensive. I can't remember exactly how much. It was under $20. And um, I always buy cheap watercolors because, you know, I'm not a watercolor artist. I just use them for, you know, mixed media stuff. So I, I have no need for expensive, high quality watercolors. In fact, this is my last container Prying watercolors, which are also very cheap. It's like a kid or student brand, but as you can see, they were in desperate need of replacement. They have been well loved over the years, and although I think this is just beautiful, I love looking at this. Um, it's not functioning too well for me any anymore. Cause like my yellow is gone, and now there's like a green sludge in there, but there's no yellow and a couple of the other colors are almost gone so I had to get a new one but I will keep this forever and ever just because I like to open it and look at it and it just makes me happy so at least I got my watercolors that helped to uh, make me feel better about the ounce of glue that I'm missing back to the vinyl clean stuff I um, cleaned out some drawers in my art room not too long ago, and I put this thing in the in a Goodwill box out in the garage, which fortunately I have not gotten around to hauling off yet, and then rescued it the other day when I was working on my little ephemera binder here and decided that I needed some pockets.
but I wanted clear pockets or pouches or envelopes or whatever. And I have some of those clear acetate ones, but I wanted sturdy ones. So I thought this vinyl would work just fine. So I took it upstairs, I sewed around it, intentionally messy because um, everything that I sew is messy. So if I do it intentional, then it looks like I meant for it to be that way. Um, when I try to do it neatly, it comes out this way anyway. So, you know, I'm just making peace with what happens naturally. And then I stuck these tags in here, and I originally thought I would put some kind of closure on it. And I might still put some kind of closure thing, but I like these for sticking it here to keep it in the book. And it's, I put some like baby powder stuff in it so it wouldn't be too sticky, and the it pages would be easy to get out, but it's still clingy enough that the, the papers don't fall out too easily. So I'm going to make some more of these. I'm glad I didn't end up giving that away. I don't remember where I left off. I think I was just flipping through here for no good reason. See, I need these in one of those pouchy things. Things like these cut out stuff that I have a big stack of that falls out of the card holders. Those need to be in pouchy things. So these, oh, these are some of the templates that I used for the paper dolls that I found online. There's some little bodies. I actually ended up using some dress form uh, images as bodies. Did I show those? See, I'm totally lost. I can't remember. Oh, were those? Maybe here. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, there they are. That's what I used. And I printed out some just generic dress form images onto scrapbook paper. And then cut them out as I needed them. And then some of them were actual patterned images that I used. So that was what the bodies were. But that's more of the paper dolls. And this is just um, more of the same stuff that I have and got a little bit better handle on it. So um, now I feel much better about my stuff, my paper bits and pieces, and my use it up journal is almost used up. And I will show you the paper dolls a little bit closer up and this journal. This is kind of my smash book, kind of not. It's, um, I thought I would make it a smash book, but I couldn't, I have a really hard time doing uh, clean journals, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, like smash book pages where there's not a lot of paint and, and ink and media, it's just paper and writing stuff and that, that's it. I, I try really hard to do that, and it's hard for me. It doesn't come naturally. So when I do this, um, you know, journal lettering class thing, I'm going to also be concentrating on trying to develop better skills at clean journaling and see what happens. But um, for now, anyway, this is my sort of smash book, daily book thing. I wanted to call it Remains of My Days. But that just makes me think of Marianne Moss's Remains of the Day class, you know, the bookbinding class, which I want to take and probably will someday, and I didn't want to confuse myself. So I called it Remnants of My Days, just the parts and pieces left over from my days. I don't do every day, just whenever I want. And this is one of those um, composition books. It's the kind with the grid pages, and I went through and glued some of the pages together ahead of time and even just out a few because, you know, I was not still not grasping the whole clean journaling thing. And in it, I just have whatever interests me at the time. These are some um, newspaper articles. This is a little home repair guide that came in a newspaper that I wanted to keep but really didn't have a place for it. So I stuck it in there with some collagey stuff. 
This was a shopping trip and some journaling about that and me trying really hard to do the clean journal thing. And more stuff on that shopping trip, just product packaging and um, little notes about what I got. And then I just, uh, it's like I was, I had clean journaling, you know, up to my eyeballs. I couldn't take it anymore. So I just mixed media the crap out of this page. There is modeling paste under here. There's collage pieces. There's acrylic paint. There's watercolors. There's oil paste. I mean, there's every, you, anything you can imagine it is on this page. Um, I think probably because this stressed me so much. So. You know, and you might say, well, I just need to embrace my style or whatever. Well, that's fine. I embrace my style. But I also want to develop skills that I feel I'm deficient at. I'm deficient at this, so I want to try to develop that more and see what happens. Because, you know, it can only be helpful, right? So, um, these dolls, these are the first ones I made. And I stuck on here. And um, they are... Uh, very varied in style. Uh, some some of them look a little bit typical art doll, paper doll. You know, like this this girl. She's got the butterfly wings. Okay, we've seen that a million times before, right? Right. But still, it's cute, and she's got wings. Um, but she's a little different because you know her dress is funky and she's got the witch's hat. So, you know, as long as there was a little bit of my own personal style in there, I didn't mind imitating others that I've seen, as long as it wasn't a, a really straightforward imitation. Uh, See, so she has that pointy witch's hat, but she came like that, so I'm okay with that. Um, and some of the dresses have layered scrapbook paper elements. Some I kind of doodled on. Uh, this girl right here, if you can see her dress, is a watercolored coffee filter. And she has just some different um, drop papers and, and exotic papers, scrapbook papers, leftover scrapbook pieces and punches. And this one is, she's one of my favorites. I don't know if you can see her. It's a vintage nun. She looks like a man. She's not really an attractive nun. But anyway, she has a pleasant look on her face. But I put her in a little corset with some uh, kind of fishnets and thigh boots. And I really think she looks happier. She does to me because she had this like big heavy habit thing on. And it, it, I could just tell she was probably hot and she feels much better. So I, I think she's happy and she doesn't feel disrespected at all. And I like this woman because she's one of those really grouchy looking vintage women. And her dress was a, it's kind of like a bumblebee masquerade costume dress. So I stuck her in that with a little crown. And I just had the best time with these. I made these and then I have in my uh, book there parts and pieces of about 25 or 30 more that I will use um, as I'm inspired. But um, that's what I did, and then I covered up my um, obvious rebellious attempt to um, compensate for the clean journaling. I just used them to kind of cover that up so I wouldn't be reminded of that. And then I moved on. This I had done before some of these others, and that was just a Sunday after church thing. We went to IHOP. I did some journaling. I did a doodle during church. And this was a, um, I had to do some more um, collage stuff, and it was a, a thank you note, a really sweet thank you note that I got from a friend, so I put it in here. And here's her envelope, and I'm, I'm covering up her return address because I, I didn't want to, <clears throat> you know, her to pick up any stalkers or anything because I put her home address on YouTube. But she's got some funny little notes on here. She loves Mary Engelbright. I, I don't love Mary Engelbright at all, so um, she's just kind of ribbing me about that. It's kind of funny. And I did some journaling on here, and this was a page we spent a day at the beach a couple weeks ago, so I um, journaled a little bit about that and put some pictures. And I love art guitars. 
Um, I have one that I made, and I need to put a picture of it on here, but I found these are a couple of other art guitars that I found. So I'm going to make that a whole page of art guitars. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I have a page of quotes that I want to remember. And then I've got some room to add some more. There will likely be several of these pages because I'm always running across quotes or sayings or excerpts from books or stories that I want to hang on to. And I'll put them in there. <clears throat> but I'm going to continue to um, work on this. Like I said, not really daily, but just kind of whenever. And uh, try to learn how to do more of that clean journaling. Okay, I think that's it. I should probably stop here. I've still got lots of things that I want to say, but um, if I do, it's going to be, you know, one of those hour and a half long deals again. So, I think that's it. I um, have at least one more flip through to do. And something else that I can't remember. There's something really awesome that I wanted to do a video for. Well, it'll come to me and then I'll, I'll do the video. Okay, um, <clears throat> that's all for now. I've already messed up one fingernail um, checking the mail and picking off the um, leaked glue out of the Amazon box. So, uh, yeah, I think we're done with that. You will probably never see this again. So here, enjoy it. And until next time, that's all that I have.